वेलकम टू यतीम खाना एंड मदरसा अंजुमन खैरुल इस्लाम पूना कॉलेज ऑफ आर्ट साइंस एंड कॉमर्स कैंप पुणे वन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर आरिफ तम्बोली वर्किंग एज एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक साइंस डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे आई हैव जस्ट वॉन्ट टू आई जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ टी वाई बी एस इलेक्ट्रॉनिक साइंस एंड दैट्स वाई i have turned the web camera on so in the beginning uh, for just introduction i will turn on the web camera and thereafter i will turn it off so i will be teaching you the second course which is called as your fiber optic communication and uh, this is a uh, paper number 6 semester 3 because you are in the old system means not a choice based credit system therefore your first and second semester is in sy and third and fourth semester will be in ty so i hope uh, that you have understood the concept of uh, the semester third and in this uh, semester third now due to covid pandemic all of you are aware that uh, we are not in a position to conduct the lectures uh, till as on today means 7th of uh, september but uh, our college authority decided that you will start the lecture in this week and already i have uh, launched so many video of paper 3 that is called analog circuit design and system means more than 50% syllabus is already available online for paper 3 and for paper 6 this is my first video and hence forth i will be in touch with you i will be preparing the videos and uh, passing on to you and uh, with this introduction uh, what i will do it i will turn off the web camera and then we'll go to the syllabus of our fiber optic communication system and we'll start our today's first lecture so thank you very much for watching the uh, introduction because in the introduction i thought that ki many students those who were irregular last year around about uh, 19 students have taken the admission but out of that 19 students i know 9 to 10 students are only uh, regular students or were regular students 10 to 11 students were very much irregular and uh, what i request all of you that it is a very good opportunity for you in covid pandemic you can visit my youtube channel i have started the preparing the lectures on fy sy ty various topics so you just uh, sit at the home turn on your uh, mobile go to the youtube channel and observe the videos and try to gain as possible as maximum knowledge in the basics of the electronic science so with this uh, i will turn off the web camera and uh, then we will proceed for the regular recording okay so this is our fiber optic communication learning objectives are there you can go through this by stop uh, stopping the slide we are going to study four units or four chapters you can say that unit number 1 it is called introduction so you read this all these things because i don't want to waste the time in uh, reading the syllabus it is already available on the website of the savitri bai phule pune university unit number 2 is here so in this unit number 2 this much topic we are going to cover all these uh, sources of the light and uh, photo detectors uh, everything this is unit number 3 fiber optic losses and measurement of that so this is unit number 3 which you are going to cover then numerical aperture measurement diameter measurement block diagram wise unit number 4 fiber optic communication so block diagram of fiber optic communication and so many other things are uh, given over here you can stop the slide you can read it and there are recommended books also given by the university of pune so you can go through this five reference books and uh, you can study the topic we are also going to provide you the ready made notes uh, in the form of pdf files or in the form of word file so along with these reference books or recommended books there is no textbook you can prepare the material and uh, with this what we will do we will start with the basics of the fiber optic communication and that is the last chapters first block that is block diagram of fiber optic communication 
so in this way here in the block diagram of fiber optic communication let us go to the block diagram so all of you observe the block diagram very carefully the block diagram of fiber optic communication system is the title and there are various blocks the first block is called your information because last year you have studied the block diagram of electronic communication and this is this year there is a slight change that is a block diagram of fiber optic communication so in both the communications information and destination is fixed so information is nothing but your sound signal or in the form of text signal or audio signal or video signal and audio and video mix together so that is called your recording of the scene and this information signal is available which is in the first block of the fiber optic communication now all of you know that normally the information signal is a low frequency signal and what we do we carry that low frequency signal with the help of a high frequency signal for a long distance communication and here in this fiber optic communication we are going to carry in this fiber optic communication we are going to carry the low frequency information signal but we are carrying that low frequency information signal with the help of optic means light signal with the help of optic means light signal and not the electromagnetic waves so that is a major difference between last year's electronic communication and this fiber optic communication so information signal which is in the form of sound waves like you are i am speaking you are listening so human being sound is in the frequency range of 300 hertz to 3000 hertz sound waves i am talking why is frequency 300 hertz to 300 3000 hertz so the bandwidth is actually 3000 hertz minus 300 hertz will be around about 2700 hertz means 2.7 kilohertz is the required bandwidth but allotted bandwidth all of you know it is a 4 kilohertz and this sound waves basically are converted into electrical signal with the help of transducer so which type of transducer is used to convert the sound waves into electric signal all of you know it's very well microphone so various types of the microphones are there so microphone is used to convert the sound wave into an electrical signal so in this way here this information source is number 1 sound waves number 2 text means when you are typing something with the help of a computer with the help of a keyboard of the computer or with the help of your keypad of the mobile phone so that is a text information again that is converted into an electrical signal either by a computer or a laptop or your mobile phone then sound is nothing but audio signal only but in case of video recorder in case of video recorder when scene is recorded at that time there is a camera and along with camera there is a microphone so that microphone records audio signal camera records video signal and uh, that's why it is called as the camera is nothing but a transducer what the camera is doing camera is converting any picture or any scene into an electrical signal any picture or any signal any scene into an electrical signal so in this way here this first block is having information and as i explain you here all these informations are converted first of all into electrical signal with the help of electrical signal converter with the help of electric signal converter and as i told you the example of sound wave which is converted into electric wave is by using a transducer which is called microphone then your text which is converted into electrical signal is either by the keyboard of the computer or keypad of your mobile phone etc then audio and video signals are converted into uh, electrical signal with the help of a camera and again a microphone now in fiber optic communication system as the name suggests fiber there is a cable which is used and that cable is called fiber optic cable and optic means related to the light optic means related to the light so whenever we talk about a light so there is a one particular wavelength associated with the light so all of you know rainbow so in rainbow there are various colors and for every color there is a particular wavelength so what we are doing in fiber optic communication we are going to convert electrical signal into optical signal 
we are going to convert electric signal into optical signal. Remember that first of all we have converted an information signal into electric signal with the help of suitable transducer. With the help of suitable transducer and thereafter that electrical signal which we are going to convert into optical signal of a particular wavelength. Optical signal of a particular wavelength. Now whatever I am going to talk, I am, I am talking here now, everything is given in the description on the next slide. So just here I am going to explain you each and every block and then that explanation I am going to read thereafter uh, in the next slides, two, three slides are there more. So here electric signal is converted into optical signal of particular wavelength I am talking because in fiber optic communication three different types of the generations are there. So first generation fiber optic communication, second generation fiber optic communication and third generation fiber optic communication. So as the generation is advances, as the generation advances, the wavelength which is used of the light is increased, is what? Increased. So in the first generation, around about 600 to 700 nanometer wavelength was used. In the first generation, around about 600 to 700 nanometer gen, uh, wave, uh, light signals wavelength was used. In the second generation, around about 900 to 1100, around about 900 to 1100 nanometer. So wavelength is in nanometer that you remember for fiber optic communication. The light signal which is there, it is having a particular wavelength and wavelengths used for fiber optic uh, for of the light in fiber optic communication is in nanometer. And in third generation, the fiber optic communication light, light used in the fiber optic communication is having a wavelength 1600 nanometer to 1800 nanometer. And then this light signal of a particular wavelength is passed. So here at the output, there is a light signal is passed through this what cable and this is called fiber optic cable. And there are different types of the fiber optic cable. So in the block diagram, just for the introduction, we have mentioned two, three, two, three types of the fiber optic cable. One is called your multi-mode step index fiber optic cable. So this is a fiber optic cable. So one is called multi-mode step index fiber optic cable. Second is called single mode step index fiber optic cable. And third is called multi-mode graded index. Third one is multi-mode graded index fiber optic cable. So in this way here, I think so we started from first block we understood what is that. Then we came to the second block which is a, a transducer which converts all this signal into electric signal. Then we come to the optical signal that is optical converter of a particular wavelength. Now the examples of optical converter means you want to convert an electric signal into a light signal. So the examples of optical converter are light emitting diode that is number one. Number two, laser diode. Number two, laser diode. And these two sources which are widely used. And there is a difference between the light emitting diode, diodes light and laser diode light. Laser diode light is highly monochromatic. Laser diode light is what? Highly monochromatic means only one wavelength, that is only one color is associated with the light emitted by laser diode. Whereas light emitted by the ordinary bulb or the light emitted by the LED is not having only one wavelength and therefore you can say that there are many colors associated with that light because there are different wavelengths associated means different colors will be there as you know for every ray of a light for every ray of a light there is a particular color and for every color there is a particular wavelength therefore here two types of the optical sources are used uh, that is your LED and laser diode. And then we came to the hot fiber optic cable. As I told you, there are three different types of the fiber optic cables which are mentioned in the block diagram. So that again, we are going to study in the next slide. Then when the fiber optic cable is there, depending on the distance, how much it is there. Suppose the distance is very less 10, 20 meter, then there is a no problem. You can use only one cable. But if the distance is long, then you have to join the cables and to join the cables there is splice it is called your splice means joining the two fiber optic cable to each other and after joining there is optical amplifier after joining there is a optical amplifier which is used 
and when the light comes out over here so this is a light signal coming out this light signal is converted into electric signal so optical to electrical converter light signal is converted into electric signal so optical to electrical converter so in this way here the last block is nothing but destination destination means what whatever information signal was there suppose sound waves so that sound waves will are converted into electric signal with the help of a transducer so called microphone and here that electric signal now will be converted further into the sound waves by using loudspeaker by using loudspeaker so in this we here the in the destination again there is a transducer so this transducer again converts light signal into sorry electric signal into original information electrical signal into original information and as you have recorded the scene with the help of camera that is called your audio and video signal so that will be reproduced over here at the destination with the help of television with the help of television you say or with the help of a computer you can say or with the help of a mobile phone you can say because now these mobile phones are also used for uh, communication and this thing and in this way this is a general block diagram of our fiber optic communication system now we are going to study each and every block in detail which is written in the next uh, slides here as shown above the first block is information which consists of signal in the form of sound text and combination of audio and video so that is what i have shown you in the first block in the second block in the second block all these signals are converted into electrical signal by using proper transducer such as microphone then keyboard of computer or keypad of the mobile phone or video camera along with microphone so these are all transducers these are all transducers which converts that information signal into an electrical signal and here we have given everything microphone converts sound signal into electrical signal keyboard of computer or keypad of mobile phone converts text into an electrical signal video camera along with microphone video camera along with microphone converts video means what scene or a picture video means scene or a picture and audio signal into an electrical signal and this is the example of what your microphone this is the example of video camera so here you can see this is the uh, your microphone is here in the video camera and this is the lens so the lens is used to catch the uh, image and in this way here these are the your transducers now in the third block what is there in the third block electrical signal is converted into light that is optical signal of proper wavelength of proper wavelength the light sources used are leds and laser diodes the light sources used are leds and laser diodes so you can stop the slide you can read it again and again this is the advantage of this uh, technology the light emitted from a laser is highly monochromatic this is very important now the light emitted from a laser laser means its long form is what light amplification of stimulated stimulated emission of radiation and we are going to study the laser in detail in the next chapter laser light emitted by the laser is highly monochromatic it means what it means that light is having only one wavelength and only one wavelength means only one color there are no so many colors mix like ordinary light in the laser diode so only one wavelength that is why it is said highly monochromatic so it is associated it uh, with what only one wavelength that is color in contrast the light emitted by the led in contrast the light emitted by the led or from led or ordinary bulb is a combination of many wavelengths is a combination of many wavelength means it, it consists of different colors it consists of different colors in the first generation of fiber optic communication in the first generation of fiber optic communication the light that is optical sources of 600 to 700 nanometers was used so as i told you 600 to 700 
nanometer nano means 10 this to minus 9 meter so wavelength is very very less in second generation it was 900 to 1100 nanometer in second generation the light sources which were used was about 900 to 1100 nanometer and in third generation it is 1600 to 1800 nanometer 1600 to 1800 nanometer now this is the advantage of fiber optic communication the light signal which is used is having a very short wavelength is having a very short wavelength and all of you know the relation between wavelength frequency and there is one parameter velocity of light wavelength frequency and velocity of light so let us go to this uh, uh, next here only due to very short wavelength in nanometer the frequency of carrier signal that is the light because we are converted information into electric signal electrical signal into optical signal and our carrier of information is now what signal optical signal that is light due to very short wavelength in nanometer the frequency of carrier signal that is light is in terahertz is in terahertz frequency you calculate that frequency because in SYBAC you studied the relationship between and here again I am quoting that equation here see c is equal to mu lambda c is equal to mu lambda where mu is the frequency and lambda is the wavelength so if you calculate c all of you know c is a constant what is the c c is the velocity of light is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second so you know the value of c now we want to calculate the mu means frequency and you know the lambda of the what light lambda is how much you can use this lambda 1600 because third generation and you can calculate the frequency you will come to know that the frequency is in terahertz and all of you know that very basics of the communication when the frequency of carrier signal is in terahertz the bandwidth of communication channel increases the bandwidth of communication channel increases and therefore it is said that the bandwidth of fiber opt 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 optic communication is very very high the bandwidth of fiber optic communication is very very high and this entire credit goes to the wavelength of light which we are using which is in nanometer the bandwidth is very high and that credit goes to wavelength of light which is used in fiber opt optic communication and that wavelength is in nanometer that will nanometer means 10 raised to minus 9 meter so in this way here this is a very simple thing so if the frequency mu or f of carrier signal that is your light is very high in that case bandwidth increases that all of you know secondly the information signal is carried by light information signal is carried by light we converted information signal into electric signal and then electric signal into light signal and we are passing that light signal through fiber optic cable therefore information signal is carried by what light so light is a carrier and therefore the speed of transmission of signal is very high speed of transmission of signal is very high and that's why it is said that fiber optic communication is fastest communication because as on today the highest velocity in the universe is the velocity of light as on today the highest velocity in the universe is the velocity of light and it is 3 into 10 raised to plus 8 meter per second so that's why fiber optic communication is very fast the light signal is passed through fiber optic cable of different types such as number one mono mode step index fiber optic cable foc means fiber optic cable sometime it is also treated as fiber optic communication but here now as i told you that three blocks we have covered so first block is our information signal second block is transducer electrical uh, information signal into electric signal third is what optical uh, converter so converter of electrical signal into light and then we are passing that light signal of various wavelength to a what fiber optic cable and we are going to study what are the different types of the fiber optic cable in short here uh, as an introduction only in detail we are going to study later on and then we'll come to last these two blocks so in this way here now let us come to this here the light signal is passed through the fiber optic cable of different types such as number one mono mode step index fiber optic cable 
mono mode mono means only single ray of light can be passed mono means single number 2 multi mode step index fiber optic cable multi mode means many rays can be passed and number 3 it is called graded index multi mode graded index but multi mode fiber optic cable so here multi mode is uh, providing the facility multi mode is providing the facility to pass many rays of the light to pass the many rays of the light and here is the problem what in this case you have to pass many rays of the light of different wavelength of different wavelength and that many rays of the light should be highly monochromatic should be highly monochromatic otherwise interference will take place and in case of mono mode there is a no problem because only one ray of light is passed you cannot pass the two information signals one ray of light is equal to one information signal and therefore here let us read this you will understand this laser diode are used for multi mode step index fiber optic cable to avoid the interference of light signal laser diodes are used for multi mode step index fiber optic cable because if you want to pass 10 information signal then all that 10 information signal if they are of the same frequency then information will get mixed with each other frequency means wavelength i am talking therefore you must have a laser diode of 10 different wavelength 10 different wavelength and for every wavelength there is one color associated so here laser diodes are used for multi mode step index fiber optic cable to avoid the interference of light signals because in multi mode many rays of light signals are passed simultaneously because in multi mode many rays of light signals are passed simultaneously so now led is used for mono mode step index fiber optic cable led is used for mono mode step index fiber optic cable because in mono mode only one ray of light is passed and this is a very simple concept now next topic ne next part is what at the output of fiber optic cable so when the light will come out from the fiber optic cable at the out output of fiber optic cable means our which block fourth block because fiber optic cable we have not considered as a one block but here that is what after fiber optic cable we have considered the fourth block and as i told you remember here inside the fiber optic cable if the long distance is there then splice means joint is there and whenever joint is there the amplification of the light signal is done by using the optical amplifiers which you have not mentioned here which are mentioned in the block diagram only so at the output of fiber optic cable that is fourth block light signal is converted into an electric signal by using proper photo converters photo converter means what photons means what light so photo converter means light converter so in this way here by using proper photo converters number 1 photo diode so photo diode is used which converts light signal into an electric signal photo diode is the example of photo converter photo means photons so photons are converted into an electric signal so photo converters so number 1 is the photo diode number 2 photo transistor number 3 pin diode pin means what p is a p type extrinsic semiconductor material n is n type semiconductor extrinsic semiconductor material and i is intrinsic semiconductor material which is also called as pure silicon and pure germanium so as here written in between p type and n type semiconductor material which are extrinsic intrinsic semiconductor material is sandwich intrinsic semiconductor material is sandwich and pin diode is a, one of the diode which converts photon means light energy into an electric energy fourth number one is your light dependent resistor that is ldr so these are the four examples of what opto converter or photo converter opto converter or photo converter some textbooks say opto converter some textbooks say photo converter so some textbooks say light energy into electric energy converter and in this way here these are the four examples the photo converters must be very sensitive to detect the light signal the photo converters must be very sensitive to detect the light signals of particular wavelength of particular wavelength because there are some photo con converters 
which are not giving the response to other wavelength they are giving the response to only one particular wavelength so that is the one important factor all photo converter produces photo current all photo converters which i mentioned above four they produces photo current due to recombination of ehp due to recombination of ehp means what electron hole pair this electrical signal means when the photo converter will convert photon photon into electric energy photon into electric energy this electrical signal is further converted into proper information signal and that is our last block that is called fifth block and that is the destination that is the destination so electric signal is further converted into proper information signal fifth block by using proper transducer such as loudspeaker which converts electric signal into sound waves or television which converts video signal into picture we are watching the television so here these are the transducers in the last block this is your loudspeaker which will convert electric signal into sound wave this is the television which will produced the picture catch by the video camera which will produce the picture catch by the video camera and along with picture you are enjoying the sound waves also sound signal also because in video camera there is a lens which catches the images and there is a microphone which catches the sound waves so in this we hear this is the final destination now after completing all these blocks and information about fiber optic communication we will go to the advantages of optical fiber communication what are the advantages of optical fiber communication now here first advantage optical fiber communication can carry information very fast optical fiber communication can carry information very fast why because that information is carried by light signal information is carried by light signal and the velocity of light is 3 into 10 raised to plus 8 meter per second and therefore it is said that the fastest way of communication is the fiber optic communication and this information rate is in gbps and mbps gigabytes per second and megabytes per second nowadays it is in tbps and gbps terabytes per second and gigabytes per second so it is also gone into the pentabytes per second now second advantage fiber optic communication can carry large information large information means what bandwidth is very high very large bandwidth and this credit goes to the wavelength of light which is in nanometer used in fiber optic communication so this is the uh, advantage that is a very large bandwidth then number third signal is unaffected by electromagnetic noise because signal is carried in the form of light signal and light signal is unaffected by the electromagnetic noise the signal conventional signal which is carried with the help of copper cable or aluminum cable that is electrical signal and electrical signal is more immune electrical signal is more immune to electromagnetic radiation but light signal is not immune to electromagnetic radiation therefore quality of the signal is very good and the fourth uh, fourth one is the fiber cable is light in weight and low cost fiber cable is light in weight and low cost as compared to conventional copper copper metal cable as compared to conventional copper metal cable so fiber cable of round about say 1 km if you talk the weight of that fiber optic cable of 1 km length is round about you can say that ki 50 kg to 80 kg but 1 km copper cable if you talk it goes more than 200 to 300 kg and that is why it is said it is very bulky and this is very lightweight and last which is very important the tapping that is called stealing of signal is very difficult you cannot tap the signal which is passed by the fiber optic cable tapping the signal that is called stealing the signal is very difficult because fiber is made by glass fiber optic cable is made by the glass in the next lecture we are going to study the different types of the fiber optic cable uh, and its construction so it is made by the glass and it gets break if you tap the cable if you try to tap the cable 
the fiber is made from fiber optic cable is made from glass and it will get break and with this this is the actual all information in addition to that now i am going to provide you so much information about the fiber optic communication so this is the picture of the fiber optic cable which we are all of you know that the in the offices or in the internet cafe or on the railway stations you can observe at many locations this such type of fiber optic cables this is our conventional copper cable all of you know and this is general diagram of a fiber optic cable which consists three parts mainly remember core so core is also made from glass cladding cladding is also made from glass and this is a protective jacket this is a protective jacket so just you remember this uh, just you watch it this here we are going to study in detail now in electromagnetic spectrum in electromagnetic spectrum as i told you that here c is equal to mu lambda see here c is equal to mu lambda what is c c is the velocity of light what is mu mu is the frequency what is the wavelength uh, lambda lambda is the wavelength and here this is the visible frequency range visible light means a human being can watch or can observe the light in this frequency from what frequency to what frequency 700 nanometer to 400 nanometer 700 nanometer to 400 nanometer or from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer you can say that starting from blue color to uh, red color and in between that all that colors are there now there is a inverse relation here there is a inverse relation between wavelength and frequency there is a inverse relation between wavelength and frequency all of you know the sine wave very well see here observe very carefully this is the sine wave now in this sine wave the distance between two adjacent peak distance between two adjacent positive peak or negative peak is called wavelength lambda is called wavelength lambda now here wavelength is what wavelength is very large wavelength is very large and therefore frequency is very less and here wavelength is very less therefore frequency is very high so there is inverse relation and this all of you know c is equal to mu lambda now this is very important which is given by the maxwell in 1873 in 1873 what the maxwell proposed maxwell proposed that visible light consists of electromagnetic waves visible light consists of electromagnetic waves because light is nothing but a photon light is nothing but a photon and photon is having its own spin s p i n and when the photon spins it produces magnetic field and when the photon spins it produces the magnetic field and it is it is having a charge and that charge is equivalent to electric field and spin of the photon is equal to magnetic field and this was given by the maxwell in 1873 and here again you see speed of light c in vacuum is equal to 3 into 3.00 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second and all electromagnetic radiations having this equation c is equal to mu lambda or lambda into mu is equal to c so this is there now i have given taken one uh, some images of the laser diode so this is one image of the laser diode this is light emitting diodes and this is again a laser diode so i am going to show you highly monochromatic laser diodes here this is the beauty of the laser diode that laser diode is highly monochromatic highly monochromatic means only one wavelength is associated and all of you know for each color for each color there is one wavelength and if you talk about red color there is one wavelength and it is a highly monochromatic you cannot get any other color in that and this is the beauty of your laser diode and therefore lasers are used in case of fiber optic communication when you want to pass more signals when you want to pass more signal so you can have a different wavelength laser diode see this is one another colors wavelength so this is a having a different wavelength this is having a different wavelength but you cannot observe any other color and i am going to show you the images with the mixed wavelength so this is your ordinary uh, diode which is called light emitting diode symbol all of you know this so here this it looks like this anode and cathode you can see here inside this and here again this is the light emitting diode so just you can stop the slide and you can watch it uh, again and again so here there is a photodiode so what is a photodiode photodiode is a converter which what converter 
opto electronic con optical converter means optics light is converted into electric signal so here there is a p type material on both side and this is the n type material and there is a window this window is given for what purpose when the light falls on this structure then this diode starts conducting so it is a photodiode so this is a symbol of photodiode light is shown over here by the arrows and somewhat like that now there is one more uh, converter which converts light energy into electric energy light energy into electric energy and that is called ldr light dependent resistor it looks like this here this is this is the photosensitive material this is photosensitive material and there is a large area of this photosensitive material so here it is ldr light dependent resistor so this area if the area of photosensitive material is large then sensitivity will increase and sensitivity will increase and this is the symbol of what ldr light is falling on that resistor and then the photosensitive material will produce the ehp electron hole pair combination and remember we must apply the supply dc supply from our pocket to convert the light energy into electric energy to convert the light energy into electric energy now there is one more uh, example which you have quoted it is called photo transistor it is called photo transistor so this is a photo transistor here so this is that is the example of this here now there is one more example which you quoted pin pin photodiode so here see p type semiconductor material n type semiconductor material and i means intrinsic so here see this much big area is given for intrinsic region so this is called depletion or intrinsic region so this is intrinsic semiconductor material which is sandwiched intrinsic i semiconductor material means pure silicon or pure germanium you can say intrinsic semiconductor material is sandwiched between extrinsic semiconductor material p type and n type that's why it is called pin photodiode and efficiency of pin photodiode is much more greater efficiency of pin photodiode is much more greater than the efficiency of normal photodiode than the efficiency of normal photodiode because in case of normal photodiode there is only p type material and n type material efficiency means what conversion of light energy into electric energy conversion of light energy into electric energy and this is very important picture because this picture will communicate you the role of fiber optic communication in entire world role of fiber optic communication in entire world you can see these are the submarine fiber optic cable these are the submarine fiber optic cable submarine means what here submarine means under the sea submarine means under the sea and recently our prime minister narendra modi inaugurated the fiber optic cable which fiber optic cable submarine fiber optic cable from chennai to the port blair chennai to port blair port blair is where in andaman and nicobar so chennai to port blair air transportation is one and half hour or roughly two hour by air you required one and half hour to go from chennai to port blair and entire sea is there so through that sea we have means erected the submarine fiber optic cable and therefore uh, fiber optic cable plays very important role and normally we say that ki fiber optic cable is having s double e c me we so s double e c me we c means what southeast asia southeast asia means we have to start from japan because japan is at the what s east so southeast asia japan then your uh, uh, south korea then china so c m e me me means what middle east middle east means what your saudi arabia and dubai and all that thing and then w e c me we western europe western europe means what your england netherland and all that things and australia and america means entire world is connected with the help of fiber optic cables entire world is connected with the help of fiber optic cable and that is the here now here i am just wanted to show the pictures of what incoherent uh, ordinary light ordinary light means here a bulb is having many wavelengths here red color blue color green color many wavelengths now if you put a pinhole aperture pinhole camera or pinhole aperture you can what get a different color uh, means in a different pattern you get the color and here there is a filter wavelength filter and this wavelength filter will produce only one 
wavelength will produce only one wavelength means only one color and that is why it is called coherent light it is called coherent or highly monochromatic coherent means highly monochromatic and see here laser coherent laser this and incoherent led many colors are there so here you see many colors red blue green but here only one color and this is the laser this is the flashlight ordinary light so in this way here i have given one more example here you can understand this is a highly monochromatic green color blue color red color now white light white light consists of all colors red blue green non coherent light non coherent light is having what yes only one color but wavelength is different but only one color but wavelength is different so here coherent light you see the distance between two adjacent positive peak is same the distance between two adjacent positive peak is same and that is why it is said it is highly monochromatic means wavelength is same because this time this is nothing but wavelength lambda and with this uh, i thank you very much for watching the video and i hope uh, i have covered the basic of the hot fiber optic communication that is the block diagram of fiber optic communication now henceforth i am going to produce you more videos and i will try to cover 70% syllabus by online video and this will be very great advantage for you people you can watch this video again and again as and when you have a time because all of you are very busy students so thank you very much for watching the video